Hello, my name is Scott Hillier, and in this screencast I'm going to show you how to create parallel tasks in a SharePoint 2010 workflow. The idea with the parallel tasks is uh, we're going to assign tasks to people. We're going to assign them to, uh, in this case, two people, and they can complete the tasks in any order. So we don't have a dependency on one person creating the task before the second. And as our example here, we've got a, a custom list here with uh, vacation requests on it. So let's go ahead and edit this item. And the way that we've got it set up is we've got the reason for the vacation here, the, the vacation request, so summer vacation. The employee is Brian Cox, and we need to get parallel approvals from Amy Alberts and Dave Richards. So you can see the first thing we've done here is we've set it up so that we're using the people picker, and the people picker fields are uh, set up to allow you to select one and only one person. Then what we'll do is have a task list associated with our workflow and you can see we have no tasks in there right now. Come back to the request, select to run a workflow, run the vacation approval workflow, and if we go back to tasks we can see now that we have a vacation approval request assigned for both Amy and Dave in parallel. If we come in now and edit this item we can have Amy finish up her task, come down and complete that task, and save it. So now we have one task completed, but one task not started, and we can see that our vacation approval is still in progress. If we click on the status, we can see the status that Amy has reviewed it and completed hers, but Dave has not back to the tasks, we'll have Dave complete his now, and save it out. And when we do that, we can come back now and see that in fact the vacation approval was completed. So how is this done? Well, let's go back to Visual Studio 2010 now and see the project that we have. So this is our workflow project. And taking a look at the designer, we can see that we have the two tasks created here. And they're running in parallel. So the key thing about this sample is this is where you know how many parallel branches you need to create. In this case, we know there's always going to be two parallel tasks. So you can see that we have create tasks 1 and 2 that create the first two tasks and then we use a parallel activity to run the task changed in parallel. So the create task activity is pretty obvious. These are just creating the initial tasks, one assigned to Amy, one assigned to Dave. Then what happens is we have these on task changed events that are waiting for someone to edit the task and each time they edit it we do a while loop and check to see whether or not the task was complete. If the task is complete we fall through through to the complete task activity. And you can see there's a while loop for each activity and then a complete. And the while activity, the change, and the complete task are all housed inside of a single sequence activity, one for each task, and the sequence activities are inside the parallel activity. So this is the key to getting the tasks to run in parallel so that your workflow will not complete until all of the parallel tasks are done. And the other key thing to note is do the creation of the tasks outside of the parallel activity. We don't need to start the parallel activity until after the create tasks are done. Taking a look at the code behind this, if we scroll down we can see the first thing we'll do of course is to create the tasks. So here's the create task 1 and create task 2 method. And what we're doing is we're simply getting the SP user for the team leader field and for the employee field and then we're doing an assign to and a description and a title for the new task so this one goes to the team leader and then the second one goes to the department head. For each of the tasks when we do our while loop 
we're using the method not complete, task one not complete, or task new two not complete. So this method will run every single time uh, we get a change to check whether or not the task is complete. And then you can see we have a changed, task one changed, and task two changed down here that's setting whether or not the task is complete. So this is pretty standard task management coding inside of SharePoint. We're just using uh, these in parallel to do essentially the same thing but managing two different tasks. And then when the task is complete, we simply mark the task as 100% complete and the outcome as having been reviewed. So the code behind it is pretty straightforward task management code. But another key aspect of this is keeping everything straight. So we have all of this parallel code going on where basically the code is exactly the same. So how do we know, for example, if we're down here on task change 2, how do we know which task the team leader or the department head is actually being changed? Well, the key to that has to do with the correlation tokens in the workflow. So if I click on Create Task 1, and we look at the correlation token, we'll see it is set to task token 1. And if I click on create task 2, it has a token of task token 2. And then if we scroll down and look at the changed, 1 is correlated to task token 1, and 2 is correlated to task token three, uh, 2, rather, and the completes are task token 1 and task token 2. So what the tokens do is they help the workflow understand that the task created in this activity should be managed in these two activities and then the task 2 is managed by these activities. So the key takeaways here for creating these parallel tasks are creating the tasks first, then a parallel activity containing a sequence activity, containing a while and the completed, and to line up the task tokens correctly and then finally to uh, code the workflow so that you're retrieving the information for just one person and assigning a task to them.